Okay, uh, coming off a uh, tough road loss uh, against a very quality uh, opponent, uh, looking back on the game, um, you know, I, I thought third quarter, right in the middle of it, we were right in the game and had a chance right there. It got away from us on a couple of different things. When I look back, you know, three of our 16 captains, I know Ricky Barber tried to go a little bit, but we didn't play without Alec Collar. We didn't play with John Rice. We played with our backup quarterback the first time he's been on the road. So when you consider all the things, um, you know, I'm looking at this thing, everything's correctable. Uh, our run defense, we had some breakdowns, we had some misalignments, all those are correctable. Offensively, um, you know, protecting the football, um, you know, especially the, the interception right before half right there, we had the momentum and everything, they're all correctable. So, you know, that's my job as a head coach, to get those things correctable. Uh, I really feel like we got a good team are the makings of a good team and uh, looking forward to playing this game. Uh, you look at Baylor, uh, they won this league two years ago. Uh, they have an outstanding head coach in Dave Aranda, which I've won against numerous times, knowing well, he's really good at what he does. They've got good players. Uh, I know they got off to a tough start, but when you, know, you look, they played two of the top teams in the country. Utah really had a chance to win, maybe should have won. And so I think that puts everything in perspective. Uh, we're going to get their best. We know that. Uh, we've got to play better than we did last week. Our guys understand that. We had a, a really good practice last night, a lot of positive energy. I mean, if you went to our practice, you wouldn't know that we just got off a tough loss. That says a lot about our, our, uh, our leaders. It uh, says a lot about our players, uh, their focus. Um, and I'll say this, like, the positive is we know kind of what we have. Or, or some areas we need to improve on, or some areas that we have some strengths in. When you play an opponent like we did in the atmosphere of the road, everything's clear. You know exactly, that's the positive, and that's a takeaway for me, uh, just from a head coach's standpoint. But we're ex extremely excited to host our first Big 12 game against Baylor, and look forward to playing questions. How much of a learning experience was Kansas State for Tim McClain, just you know, facing a really stout defense, and you know, he made some plays, but some of the decisions he maybe should have made. So how important was yeah, that? Yeah, you know the thing about it, you know he 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 processed and he knows, you know, and that his first really rodeo uh, in two years, you know, and, and that that was a real atmosphere. I mean, I think back to the atmosphere since I've been here, that was probably the best. I mean, we played in the Gasparilla Bowl, but it was you know just as many fans as with another team. So uh, it was a learning lesson for him. There's no doubt uh, he understands exactly. The things that uh, he made the mistakes on, uh, he's committed to not making the same mistakes. It's very important to him. That, that's that's really really a big thing, and uh, I know he'll improve. You know, next time that presents itself. Guess you talked about the positive energy. You know, coming into practice. You know, after the loss, what does that say about this team? And, and you know, as you guys move forward and are coming yeah. off, you know, those losses. Yeah. You know, first of all, it doesn't surprise me. It uh, didn't surprise me from the standpoint of just knowing how close our team is. Uh, uh, you know, we've not had any drama. I mean, you know, we strained them big time in camp to set up for this. So it doesn't surprise me, but it's always encouraging that when you go through something like that, then reality hits. Because that's when you really feel like, you, or you understand what type of team you have when you have some adversity and you come off your first loss. And, you know, uh, but it was very encouraging, but not surprising to me. We got some real leaders, and we got a, a really good group of guys. We we made a big big deal about playing that first Big Twelve game. You know, you, talk, you mentioned it a little bit, but how much of a level up did it, did it, did it was it, or did did you realize it was now that you played that first Big Twelve game? How, how important is that experience of just getting that first? Yeah, game? well, I think like I said, it's now we know everything's clear. You know, when you play a really good opponent, your deficiencies are magnified or your your strengths are even magnified. So that was really good from a coach's standpoint, uh, really in all three phases. You know, I met with all three groups, coaching staff. Uh, we talked about, you know, everything, plan moving forward. Um, and I think we'll have a good plan, you know, in all three phases moving forward. After the game, you talked about your team needing to run the ball better. Why do you think the team didn't run as effectively, especially in the second half? Yeah, um, you know, there's a couple different things. Um, you know, when we got behind, that was a completely different deal. And I think that had something to do with it. when we got down by more than one score, started, you know, having to drop back every time. But 
Um, you know, bottom line is for us to be effective, we've got to be effective running the football. It doesn't matter who we're playing. Uh, we're a run play action team. And uh, you know, when you look at the stats, like I said, again, that's what kind of hurt me more than anything. From 287 yards to 140. I mean, that's, we take great pride in that. And uh, hats off to them. I mean, they, they got after us and they have a lot to do with that. You mentioned, you know, you got the big 12 road opener out of the way. How's the home opener? Just what's going to be like the, the showcase? bounce house you see after the first time as a big football team, I guess, a big home opponent on Saturday. Yeah, well, I mean, this is one of the better venues to, to play football in, and, and uh, I think the whole conference, when they come through, they'll figure that out. I mean, it's a great environment. I've been uh, just about everywhere, and I'll put this environment up against any. You mentioned that some of your captains weren't able to play. Alec Holler, I think you played some of the Villanova game after suffering the injury, so yeah. what caused him to miss the game, and what's well, the status going he, forward? He got, he, you know, probably the adrenaline was taken over to finish the game, but you know, we got to Thursday and it didn't look real good and say, we'll see how things are in pregame and they just weren't great. And, uh, you know, he's a tough guy. Uh, Ricky, you know, we held him out last week and then he played sparingly and just, you know, we, we pulled him. So you're talking about three of our best players, three of our captains go on the road against the defending champs and you got your backup quarterback, which they played their starting quarterback. I know there was a lot of questions, but he played really good. Matter of fact, he ran really good. So uh, they were pretty much full strength, I would say, and are close to it. And we weren't. And, but, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get our guys back and we'll go from there. Coach, obviously, uh, as the year goes on, all parts of the team are continuing to build things like that, but particularly the offensive line got that first Big 12 t test there on the road. Um, how do you feel about how quickly they've built it together, and what are you going to build on uh, to uh, host uh, the bounce house here? Yeah, we, we, you know, we're, we're, we've got to figure, we've got to get to a point where we have the same five every week, and we haven't had that one time. And I don't know if that's ever happened in my career, so we got it. They did good. A pretty solid job in the run run block, and when it was passed, we had to pass. We didn't do a great job of protecting. We have to get better in those scenarios. You know, Timmy was running around like a chicken with his head cut off sometimes, but in his defense, I mean, they were rushing three and they got to us, you know, and so we got to do a better job the next time that uh, situation presents itself. Coach, in your experience, what are some things you can do to get better at tackling? Is that just a mindset? Is it more like a circuit? Is it more just reps during practice? What are some things you can do? At yeah, you know, in practice, obviously, you, you, you do tackling drills, but there was a lot of alignment issues that uh, when you got your proper alignment, you know, the defense is top with fits. When you get out in space against really good people, that, that, that's, that's really tough, okay? But we got to do a better job just getting lined up. Just get lined up. Simple football, get our fits down, and uh, that had a lot to do with it. And then when, when you get really good backs in the second level, it's a little bit of a tough task to, to tackle really, really well. But, um, you know, we'll get better as the season goes. There's no doubt about that. We'll spend quality time in practice doing that, too. The alignment, was it something that Kansas State did, or was it just like getting to play in a big well, group? No, we didn't, we, just, we didn't do a real good job getting lined up to certain things. So we'll do better moving forward. Baylor's been dealing with quarterback injury issues just like you guys are. Blake Shapin, I think they said maybe this is the first week he could possibly return. I don't know if that's definitive yet. They're starting quarterback, but just what do you know about the Baylor offense and I mean they haven't been playing at full strength either. Yeah, Jeff Grimes, um, you know, I know Jeff real well. He was uh, with me. We won the national championship in 2010 with Cam. He's our offensive line coach. He's really good. Uh, really good coordinator, really good coach. He presents a lot of different challenges. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll see who plays quarterback. I mean, you know, last week, same kind of deal. The starter shows up. So we just got to be prepared to, to, to be ready for whoever plays quarterback. But he's a really good offensive coach, and we're going to have to do a good job defensively. Heading into the game last week, you said you were really impressed about the physicality of Kansas State. How would you grade the team's physicality in that game, and how do you get them to stay aggressive going into the next Yeah, game? they were physical. Hats off of them. We knew they were. Uh, we weren't physical enough at times, and uh, that's something we're going to have to get better at. Rush for 280 yards and we rushed for 143. I think that tells the, the tale, so we'll have to get better in that area. How is John Rice progressing? Is he trending in the right direction? Yes, yeah, he is. Uh, he is getting better. I do think that, that you know, he is ahead of schedule from what they originally told me. Uh, you know, we'll see. You know, I said a couple weeks ago that it'll be a few weeks. I still think that is true. Uh, I mean, I'm not ready to tell you. 
I will be up to play this. I'm not ready to do that, but hopefully in the near future, uh, we'll get him back. Like last week, you've got two quarterbacks that the bench prepare for. So what goes into you know, scheming against both different skill sets and how much time is invested in that? Yeah, I think this week's going to be more about just us making sure that, that we get the things cleaned up that we need to get cleaned up. And whoever plays quarterback will adjust as we go. I mean, from a coach's standpoint, you know, you have different calls for different types of quarterbacks, but it'll be more big picture and get things cleaned up this week. I know, I know uh, coming out of last year, a lot of focus was on finishing games, especially, especially in the fourth quarter, getting the chance to play a, a close game in the second half on, on the road. What, what did you learn about the team and, and how they'll, they'll respond and what do you want to see from them the next time? Well, they, they kept fighting. I mean, I, I think everybody saw, I got to play hard. Not told me yesterday. I'm so proud of them. They played hard. I mean, we got to clean up the penalties. I mean, that, you know, the, the key, key sequence of the game is when it was fourth and two and a half. We chose not to go for it and we pinned them back. And they drove the field and scored a touchdown. We had 30 yards worth of penalties. So, I mean, that's really what stands out to me. Um, make people earn it. They're good enough by themselves. Um, that was a key sequence in the game. After the game, you were asked about the measure of your team against a Big 12 foe. Did you see a talent gap and differential between these two teams? No, no, we've got talent. I mean, we got talent. I, mean, I think we can play with really anybody in the country talent-wise. Um, we'll continue to improve. Um, you know, our goal is to improve each week. And, you know, y'all y'all saw it firsthand. We know it, our deficiencies and where we fell short. Uh, they're all correctable. Uh, I really think we got a good team. As a matter of fact, I know we got a good team. And our players feel the same way. And so in a way, it's a tough loss, but in the big picture, I'm encouraged because I know exactly we got the makings of a good football team. So that's the positive takeaway, you know, after you play the defending champs on their own field. You talk about Kansas State was a very physical team. Where does that come from? Is that strength and conditioning of experienced players, older players? What goes into that? And, and it's all, yeah, it's all above. I mean, it's a mindset. It's a personality of who you are. And I've always taken great pride on on our teams being physical. And um, so it, it was good. It was good for us to uh, to uh, play a team like that. Um, you know, and we'll uh, we'll learn from it. You, you talked about going back to John Rice, Paul. You talked about. He's progressing better. So there's likelihood that he will be back this year at some point. Good. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah I'm not. I mean, I'll be shocked if he's not back. And hopefully sooner rather than later. Like I said, I'm just not ready to say, hey, he's got a chance to play this week. I'm not saying that. But, but I do think he'll be back sooner than we originally thought if he keeps progressing like he has been. Is there any, if, if something were to happen, I'm not trying to be, but if, is there a thought of, of a medical redshirt if he if he comes right back? now he, he's planning on coming back and playing. Okay. We've not had any conversations or anything like that. Okay. And how has he done with like working with Teddy like, as, as, a, as a kind of a coach on the Yeah, side? he's in every meeting. Um, you know, on the road, he's sitting right beside him and talking through every rep of practice. When our twos are out there, he's back there behind him. He's doing everything he can uh, to help Timmy, and it's been a it's been a really good thing for Timmy. Coach, with the, with, uh, you mentioned positive energy in the locker right now in practice last night. With this first Big 12 home game for this program, how excited are the guys in the locker right now? Yeah, they're, I mean, they're, they're real excited. Uh, they're real excited to, to be back home. First Big 12 home game against, uh, you know, two years ago, the champion this league. So they're real excited. Coach, can you talk about how proud you are of guys like Kobe Hudson, Johnny Richardson, and Kyle Martinez, just taking that next step from where they were and where they're going and how much they'll help this team down this late stretch? Yeah, yeah, you, there's a handful of guys you just said, and there's even some more that, you know, have really raised their level from where they were last year. And that's what you got to do. That's what all the good ones do. Um, and that's how we get better. I mean, it's, it's that. You got to, each week, you got to find a way to improve in college football. It's so hard to do. It's easy to talk about. But at the first year, you always see these so-called hot teams and they just kind of, they lose momentum. Then you see a few that may be under the radar that gradually find a way at the end to keep improving. That's our that's our challenge. Like, that's the group we need to be. That's the group I think we can be. Matter of fact, I know we can be, but you know, we gotta we gotta go to work, we gotta clean some things up. You mentioned the, the cracks in the run defense are easily. 
kind of things do they see or do you guys do to, to make that you know fixable in, in a hurry? Yeah, like I said earlier, I mean, uh, a lot of it was alignment. So I know that sounds simple, but that's really what a lot of it was. Last night, you said you guys had a great practice. How would you grade during the game? How Timmy responded to some of those issues that he had on the field? Was he able to bounce back right away, or was he mentally kind of getting shaken up? You know, I think that was his first rodeo on the road with us. I mean, he was trying his best to, to fight off what happened before and go on to the next play. I mean, that's just part of, of being a quarterback. And, you know, I really believe that's the toughest position, probably in any sport, is, uh, is your quarterback. The higher level you go up, the more important quarterback is. And I thought he did some good things. And, and I'll say this, in his defense, like, we got to be better around him in some things too now. Okay, there was a couple times that we had some protection breakdown, people in his face, and so I know it all looks like there was probably three plays that he takes away from that game, like we can't ever do that again type deal. And I really believe he won't. But we got to be better around him. And you know, anytime your backup quarterback comes in, that's what I told our team. Like, everybody has to raise their level. You know, he's still learning and he's still growing. I'll take you back to John Rice. You know, game two or three, Louisville. Like, I mean, like, so we got to be really, really good around him because he's a good quarterback. I mean, he's got a really good skill set. He probably throws that deep ball as good as anybody I've had. I mean, he takes it natural. So there's a lot of really positive things to take away that uh, we knew he was going to make some mistakes. I mean, that's, that's natural. We got to be really good around him. Coach, in a similar vein, um, what kind of a learning uh, experience would the defensive front have? Right? You got 165 yards of non receiver uh, catches in yards there. Um, what, what can they kind of learn to pick up as they play uh, Baylor next week and somebody else who have a set of athletes? Yeah, I think it's just, it's not, it's, it's everyone. It's, it's the whole, whole deal. Um, it, it is alignment, players, it's possible calls. I mean, we just got to do a better job with everything. And we got to create turnovers. You know, I think we had one turnover, but really that was because the corner made a really, really good play on the ball right there. So we didn't get after the quarterback last last week. I think we hit him two times, and I think two of those were zero. We hit him three times. Two of them were zero blitz, and then the other one, they got a 15 yard penalty. So we, we, didn't, we didn't disrupt the quarterback, and that had a lot to do with with uh, not getting but one turnover, and it had a lot to do with them being able to run the football successfully and made a tough one. Coach, you want to say I've been crushing on the recruiting trail, got a strong 2024, 2025 class. How important is it for you to make that on-field performance match what you've done off the field in the recruiting trail? Yeah, it goes hand in hand. Uh, there's no doubt it goes hand in hand. And, you know, I really believe we're one of the programs on the rise. I know recruits feel that way, I feel that way, but at the same time, you've got to get down the field. Our guys are committed to that. Like I said, I mean, I really feel like we got a good team. Matter of fact, I think we got a really good team. Um, so that was a learning experience. Um, you know, I've had had losses early in years before, and had teams that really finished strong. And I really believe that this team uh, has, I know, has the makings to do that. Can you explain a little bit more on your relationship with Dave Aranda? I know you've gone toe to toe with him, Auburn and LSU, where he was yeah. before. What makes him good, a good coach? Were there any memorable games that you remember? Basically? Yeah, I mean, I think he was at Utah State um, back in the day. We played and was at Auburn. Uh, uh, he was at Wisconsin. We played him in a bowl game. Uh, I don't know how long he's at LSU. We forget four or five years, but we know each other well. He's really good. Um, a really good coach. I got a lot of respect for him. Um, then Jeff Grimes, and like I said, I got a lot of res respect for Jeff too. So it's two really good football coaches. How's Boomer feeling after a miss? Obviously, it's not something he's familiar with, but how are the team, how did everybody respond to the miss field goals? It was 52 yards. Uh, right, I don't know, man. You could turn on the NFL and do that and make it every He finally missed one in two years. I mean, so I pat pat him on the back, so we'll get him next time. So. You guys all set? Thank you, Coach. We got one more here. One more. Sorry, guys. I just one more question. Uh, you guys have been talking about the recruiting standpoint. One of those touchdowns was an Orlando to Orlando touchdown. Timmy to RJ Harvey. I know what it meant, but it actually happened. You didn't really like Orlando, but is it cool to see Central Florida recruiting an impact on a single play like that? Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, when I first was hired, the goal in recruiting was to keep our top players home. That's how we're building it, 
and you'll see more and more of that. And how it works is top players that can go anywhere that choose to stay home and then they get on the field and have success, it just steamrolls everything else. So that's really a big piece. You're going to see more and more of that. There's a lot of these hometown heroes that are playing really, really well. They're just not scoring touchdowns. But you can reach your goals and dreams here. I really believe we're one of the programs of the future. Um, so it's a really good time to be the coach here and recruit. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.